it, and you know, anyway, it's from Singing in the Rain. And it is Friday, Woo. May 12th. For us, it's payday, yes. But more importantly, I'm your host right now, and I know it sounds like I have a cold, because I'm wearing this silly nose, and I was telling Kelly earlier, I forgot to put red in my hair. I was gonna do that, right? One opportunity mm -hmm. to really be silly, with, but anyway. We are celebrating International Laughter Day. And we're gonna tell you why this is so important and why we've been doing this now, I think about 12 years on Village in Motion. So let me introduce first my lovely co-host and guest. And I'm gonna take off my nose because it does get a little hot. Oh, thank you. It's a pain for us to hear too. <laughs> <laughs> so Kelly, of course, is with Community Resources, yep. and when I said, oh gosh, I have to come up with something for Laughter Day, I went, oh, well, Kelly isn't joking herself. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'll let that one slide, Diane. Okay, but you said you <laughs> did have a joke for me, so uh, I think we should start today Let's with a joke. Let's try this out. Okay, so I, I, I went around to the Everett sisters, you know, Molly and Amy here, and they gave me a couple good ones. Let's try this out. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. Uh, da -na, da -na. I'll be here all morning. <laughs> so that, I hope I hope the other two are <laughs> better than that. Let's save them. I don't want to waste them all in one. Okay. Okay. So so why are we here, Diane? Right. National Laughter Day. It can't be a real day. It <laughs> it is a real day, and and it was started by actually a group of people doing yoga, hmm. and. You would think yoga has nothing to do with laughter, but there are groups of people who practice yoga and they do it with laughing. So they do the yoga Ooh. routines and they're laughing. And we're gonna um, show that a little bit later <laughs> and how people actually do that. But there's also very much a healthy benefit. And I wanted to talk about first five secrets. Okay. There's five secrets Oof. as to why laughing, especially laughing for no reason. Yeah. So even though, Kelly, you want to tell another joke and, and I'll yeah. lead into it. Okay. The um, well, let's see. There, a, a big tomato says, or no. Let me give a different one. We have a guest on today who's going to be a clown. Okay. Who was a clown? Cricket the clown Cricket, will be okay. on so, later. So hopefully. So this is maybe her on jokes theme. Are very but this is on theme. Much. Listen to this. Okay. Uh, two cannibals are eating a clown, and one says to the other, "Does this taste funny to you?" <laughs> Dunna. Ba -ba -ba. Dunna. Okay. So <laughs> you can fake <laughs> laugh on that. Terrible, terrible joke because there are five <laughs> secrets to laughing for no reason at all. Okay, okay, let's hear. One is we don't need a sense of humor to laugh. And I don't think <laughs> that particular joke had anything to do with humor, but that's okay. <laughs> Two, motion creates emotion. So when we laugh, we're, you know, we, we're in, in motion. Yeah, that makes sense. Three, you can laugh even if you are not happy. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about today yeah. is to laugh even though, you know, it's like when the world, when you cry, no one cares, mm -hmm. but when you laugh, the world will laugh with you. Four, it cultivates childlike playfulness. Mm. So we get to go back to being a kid, which some of us liked more <laughs> than being an adult. And you can train your body and mind to laugh. Did mm. you know that? Wow, we must have done some good training then. Right, and so that whole yoga, yeah. laughing, so that it has to do with the body. But don't take my word for it. We went to an expert. We went to our nurse practitioner, who's also the head of our wellness, um, employee health and wellness center here on campus. Plus, she is the regional, one of the regional directors, or associates for all of Erickson and so I went to Dr. Sherry and I said doc tell me about laughter hello Muppet. I bet you're wondering why I'm dressed like this today but you're here to talk a little bit about laughter I hope that brought just a little bit of laughter to you so I have a couple quotes for you. One from Maya Angelou. She says, she doesn't trust anyone who doesn't laugh. Mark Twain says, the human race 
um, has only one really effective weapon, and that is laughter. And our last quote is from Audrey Hepburn. She says, she loves people who make her laugh. She honestly thinks it's the one thing she likes most to do, is to laugh. It cures a multitude of ills. It's probably the most important thing in a person. So, when we talk about laughter ther therapy, you know, it was first conceptualized back in the 1970s from an American psychologist, and her name was Dr. Annette Goodhart, um, and she thought it was a way to help heal the mind. And then, when we go into the 1990s, we started talking about the physical part of laughter and how it helps us from the Indian laughter yoga uh, movement. And then we bring that up to today, and now we have what is a laughter wellness, which integrates both ideas of mind and body. So, what happens when we laugh? We have psychological, we have a lot of physiological changes that happen. Um, we stretch our muscles in our face, um, our heart rate goes up, our blood pressure goes up, we breathe a little faster, so there's more oxygen in our tissues, and that can never be bad. And our blood flow, there was actually research done in the University of Maryland. And what they did is they had some people that watched comedies, and then they had some people that watched some drama. And they felt that the people, and they found that the people that were watching the comedies, their blood vessels would expand and contract very normally. But those that actually watched drama, their vessels would constrict. So that was a better blood flow with people that watched comedies. And it also affects our immune response. So we know that stress in, is increased with, uh, what stress does is it causes our immune system to kind of go down a little bit. So some studies say that humor may actually raise our infection-fighting antibodies in the body. It actually helps us fight disease. One of the most interesting things I found out is on blood sugar levels. Now, this study was just done on about 19 people that were diabetic. They both got fed the same food, and then half of them listened to a lecture, and then the other half actually watched a comedy. And what they found is they tested blood sugars afterwards. The people that actually watched the comedy, their blood sugar levels were low, lower. So that's really interesting. And then we move to relaxation and sleep, which I think is really important. And laughter, this began kind of with Norman Cousins. Some of you might remember him in his memoir, Anatomy of an Illness. And this came out in 1979. He was actually diagnosed with a really painful spinal condition. And what he did was he found that what he calls a diet of comedy with the Marx Brothers or Candid Camera, or two of the ones that he mentions, helped him feel better. And he found that if he laughed for 10 minutes, he got two hours of sleep without any pain, which was pretty amazing for him. So is laughter the best medicine? We truly don't really know. There's not really enough studies to tell us exactly if it's laughter or is it laughter is it, or is it social because it's so social that we're with family and friends. But we know that there's so many health benefits that comes from being with our family and friends. So whether we laugh because we're with family and friends or we're with family and friends because we laugh, it's sort of like the chicken and the egg. It doesn't really matter as long as we do it. Laughter is free, has both mental and physical um, benefits. It's an outlet of feeling. It's sustainable. It's reliable. It's always there. So if you have time, there's also a laughter online university that has a couple videos that really neat. I'll end with telling a joke. So if Diane doesn't want to put this joke on there, it's okay. But my dad tells this joke. So he says that the gentleman was walking into a bar and he saw a sees a dog. And he says to the owner of the bar, does that dog bite? And the owner says, no. Now it's the only dog that's there and the only owner that's there. So the guy goes up and he pets the dog. The dog bites the guy. So he goes back up to the guy and he says to the owner, he says, I thought you said that your dog doesn't bite. He goes, my dog doesn't bite, but that's not my dog. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, Kelly, yeah. that was a joke. Come on. That was funny. I know, but give me a break. Come all on. right, all right. But are you Travis Cricket the Cloud? Yeah. And what's going on? I mean, I we're, mean, we're, we're waiting we're, for we're, Cricket here. I don't know. I, I thought she was reliable, but maybe I can t try out another joke I have in my old book. Good morning. Uh, hi, Kay. Glad uh, to uh, saw uh, you. Glad to saw you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kay. Well, I mean, welcome to the show, but we're waiting for our friend Cricket, so I'll talk to you after this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so 
What does the big tomato say to the little tomato? A uh, big tomato. Um, Catch up. Uh, Catch up. Get it, Diane. I got that. Yeah, <laughs> got what, oh. the, what the? What the? Kay, what are you doing? Oh, you got. I also want to. Well, oh, is that because we're, it's the oh, host? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's so sweet. Thank you. Oh. It's just a straw. Kay. All right, well. Since you're here, Kay, we might as well entertain you while we're waiting for cricket. <laughs> Gee, <laughs> come on, join us. What do you? What else you got there? Well, you know, as a clown, you have to change the routine by the kind of audience you have. How old are they? What condition are they in? Those yeah. sort of things, okay. you know. So, for instance, suppose I was invited to a second grade classroom. Yeah. And second graders have already been exposed to the eye chart to test their oh, yeah. vision, you know, and they have to read the letters on the chart. So I thought maybe I'd test you a little bit. Oh, she sure. needs testing because I, she's... Come on. Yeah. Um, can you read the three letters on this chart? Let's see. I, Y, Q. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Now say it fast. I, Y, Q. I, Y, Q, too. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> well, Okay, <laughs> you know, you keep, you say as a clown. What do you mean? You were a clown? That's me. That's not you. Yeah, that's me. This My name is, is Cricket. What? Is, yeah. Well, well, that's amazing. I didn't know that, Kay. Come join us, Cricket. I'll You'll call take, you that from now on. Okay, why don't right? you take her yeah, so she yeah. doesn't have to. So can we get a shot of, of Cricket and Kay and, what was this, a previous life? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Because the truth of the matter is, when I'm invited now to be Cricket the Clown, I remember that it takes half an hour to get, I mean, a whole hour to get into makeup, a whole hour to get out. You haven't done anything yet. <laughs> and when a clown walks out the door, he's on. When a magician walks out the door, all the tricks are in a black bag, nobody knows. But boy, you step out of the door looking like that, you're on. <laughs> Wow. So let's talk a little bit of how you went from, or I don't know, from here to there, or back and forth. I mean, how <laughs> did you, how did you end up being a cricket? You won't believe this, but about 20 years ago, the Northern Virginia Community College taught a course in clowning. Really? Uh, yeah. And as a fallout from that, I took lessons from somebody who took the course, you know? Mm -hmm. And the first thing you have to do is identify what kind of clown are you? But before you get into that, why would you become a, I mean, why would you do that? I would have never, I mean. Well, several reasons. First of all is that the emotion in me that's the strongest is humor. <laughs> and then the second thing is the nest was empty. Ah, <laughs> so you needed you needed I another. I needed a project. Okay. So I became a clown. All right. So, so, so you went. For, so you you studied. And and how long ago was this? Um, Twenty years. Twenty five years, maybe something like that. And uh, and I, you know what I learned very quickly, that a lot of kids are afraid of clowns. I have a granddaughter whose daddy always took her to the Orioles games, and she was afraid of the Orioles bird. So you can imagine how afraid she was of clowns. And so I worked out a program where I started out dressed normally, whatever that is. <laughs> like that? You're, yeah. I would say that's kind of normal. <laughs> gradually changed into Cricket the Clown. And each step along the way, I'd say, does my voice sound the same? And they'd all say, yes. And then I said, well, at the end, s listen to me. And they did. And I said, see, clowns are people. <laughs> and, and so it was such an effective program that I did it in kindergartens. I did it on, for birthday parties for little people and so forth. And it, a lot of little people that I know that were afraid of clowns were no, not afraid anymore. And that, so they could laugh instead of cry, and they could shake hands instead of... Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You have to be careful. Wait, wait a minute. Let me, so how do you yeah. shake a hand? 
Glad to oh. saw you. Glad to saw you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that, the first time I did that in a retirement community, the lady said, "Oh my shoulder! <laughs> you, you better be careful. You can get sued." <laughs> Oh my God! So, so you, when when we had talked, um, while we were preparing for the show, you you said you were in a college of clowns. Well, so clowns come in colleges or alleys or groups. So like that, that is that the plural of clowns, a college, <laughs> you know? Well, whatever. But clowns tend to form in communities amongst themselves, so that you could invite a group to come to do something. Uh, to like one time um, in the Reagan administration, uh, the summer pr emphasis on the mall was handicapped. And so they invited my college, my clan, to come into town and mingle with the handicapped people. So we rode in on the metro dressed as clowns. <laughs> you couldn't do that today. I don't think. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we would. started a trend that we had never <laughs> intended to start. I don't know. But anyhow, one, uh, they were playing tennis. The people in wheelchairs were playing tennis in the tents. And I wanted so much to see that. First of all, they gave you a helium balloon, you know. So here we were walking around with this helium balloon. And I decided to duck in this tent and watch them. So I did. And a few minutes later, my balloon exploded. And then I looked, and in front of me, in a wheelchair, was Jim Brady. And that sound sounded awfully much like a gunshot. And I think we all jumped three feet in the air when that happened. You never know. You've got to be prepared. You have to find a way to laugh no matter what happens. Yeah. Did he end up laughing? Because he was known for his humor. Well, um, you know what? I didn't stay around too long. <laughs> you said, I better get out of here. <laughs> I didn't want him to know who exploded behind him. So. so when you're in the Metro and you're, of course, you're with a group of yes. your yes. colleagues, I mean, I could imagine, I, you know, the people just kind of go, can you see that? <laughs> yeah. Like, sure. One of the things we did, and I should have brought one, is a, one of these dusters on a handle, you know, that you right. dust your furniture. Sure. And then you go up and tickle somebody under the chin, and <laughs> they're not too sure about you, or they not, you dust the dandruff off their shoulders <laughs> or something like that. So there are things that you can do in a fluid situation like that. You have no idea what's ahead of you. You don't know who's going to be on that. Yeah. And as a tramp, I'm a little bit intimidating, apparently. And so sometimes the other clowns got along fine, but people stayed away from me. But I, you know, really? you never know. Yeah, oh, because yeah. they thought you were maybe yeah, a real, a, a real tramp. <laughs> <laughs> and just, who just happened to have a red nose. And, and, you never know. and white um, makeup and all. Yeah. So in the courses you took, it was it one course or several courses? It was, it was, I just took one course. And then from But it there? lasted um, once a week for about three months because it takes a long time to really get the soul of a clown inside of you. Yeah. So how did you decide to transform from yeah. a hobo instead of, I mean, I guess Yes, that's one of the things they ask you to do from the very beginning. Begin to think about yourself and find your clown. There's a clown in everybody. So look for your own clown. Mm. And I'm an introvert, and so a tramp was sort of a little bit um, unsure of yourself and a little bit slow to react suited me pretty well. So that's how I. So did they give you like a list of? No, no, no. Type the of world clowns? is your oyster. You can pick anything you want to pick. And, mm. and so you. you and just any name. And I figured that tramps spent a lot of time under bridges, and so did crickets. Mm -hmm. So, cricket the clown. How about it? it turned out right. And then from there, so you, so you went from, from the class to the college. Yes, and, and we got invitations to do many different things. Do you get an invitation? Do you, I mean, can they say, oh, we don't want any more crickets, we have a cricket? And <laughs> No, I don't. If they got a, an invitation like that, they never told me. So whatever the group did, I went right along with them. And uh, I, 
It was fun to be a little bit different, you know. To, to what was the reaction of your, your family when you transformed? I mean, when first, when you told, I can't imagine, <laughs> I'm taking this clown course. You know what? Nobody was surprised because <laughs> they got used to me when they were tiny little guys. And um, one of my, uh, my number one daughter went off to William and Mary and told all her friends, you should meet my mother. She's the funniest thing. So when eventually we went to, down to see her at school and all her friends were standing around in a circle looking at me, waiting for me to be funny, which was quite challenging. <laughs> So anyhow, <laughs> so next time you came as cricket, and that way you could yeah. you could make a laugh. But what does? Let's go back to that whole. You know, we talked about the five secrets. So do do you feel? I mean, do you get that whole physical sense of well-being when when you're the? Clown? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You, I can be. I, I am not clinically depressed, but every once in a while, people feel a little down, and and laughter brings me back to to the level playing field with the rest of the world. So, but I want to tell you something else. Sometimes laughter comes in the form of tears. One time I was invited to a children's ward of a hospital in North Carolina. So I went in prepared to do tricks in the great room where the sick children all gathered around me. And that was fun, and they, they laughed, and that made them better. And it was a, a nice experience. But then the nurse came in and said, you know, we have children who can't come to the great room to play. Would you go into some of the rooms? And I said, oh, sure. So I went into, the first room I went into was a little lad of maybe five, six, I don't know. And he had cancer pretty serious cancer. But I went up to him anyway, and I tickled him with the duster and, and started talking to him. And he talked back to me. And he, I said, how are you? And he said, I'm sick. And I would say, do you hurt? And he said, yes, yeah, sometimes it hurts. And, and he just really talked to me and shared his problems. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw his mom who had, was sitting there with tears streaming down her cheeks. And I sort of thought that was normal. If my child had cancer, mm -hmm. I'd be doing that too. But then I found out that that was the first time that child had spoken out loud for months. But you know, one thing that's very interesting is that children will talk to a clown because they don't think a clown is a people. <laughs> a clown is a different species. And so as I interacted with that little boy, the tears that I saw on his mother's cheeks were tears of laughter. She was so excited and happy that that little guy was talking after all this time. And so you never know, do you? That, that, that is just an amazing story. Yeah. I would have never, you no, know. No. I, I, wow. it, it, took me by surprise, I have to tell you. And then I felt guilty afterwards. I made the mother cry. <laughs> so wow. even when you're a funny clown, you have a guilty conscience. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking back over your, your career, and you've more or less kind of retired from cricket? Well, yes, because it's so hard to do. I've been cricket two or three times since I've been at Greenspring. But boy, I had to take the next day off to recover <laughs> from it. And so. Um, more and more, cricket is pushed to the back of the closet. You have to really dig to find cricket anymore. So, yeah. so, yeah. so of all your adventures, and, and, and I, I love the story of the, the child in the hospital. Yeah. Can you tell us one more highlight of your, your career? Um, some of you may have been to the First Baptist Church of Alexandria in the Christmas season when they have a Christmas, a living Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. It's advertised here, there are bus trips going down to it and so forth. And the first year they had it, they decided to have on a Saturday afternoon, fill it with clowns. So I was one of the clowns. And when you, that, if you've seen that tree, you know how much greenery there is around you and you've got a narrow little place like this. So you get on that tree going, you know, very carefully. 
so that was fine, and we did a few funny things and sang some funny songs and so forth and so on, and then it was over, and it was time to get off the tree. And so I started backing off this way, and I got caught in the wiring that was <laughs> holding all that greenery up. And I thought, oh no, everybody's going to be off the tree but me, and I'm going to be stuck in the wiring. And uh, I, I had some really serious moments for a while till I finally got myself untangled from the wire and managed <laughs> to get off the tree just about next to the last person, I think. Or, excuse me, the next to the last clown. Clown, because they're not persons, they're yeah. clowns. I know you brought one more <clears throat> item with you to share. So how about mm. if, um, and you go get the item, and you have one more joke for us? Or are we out of jokes from I got, Kelly? I got one more. You got one more? Okay, okay. I'm gonna put my clown nose out. Um, what do you call a nosy pepper? A nosy pepper? A dozy, dozy pepper. Pepper as a green pepper or pepper? Yeah, pepper, pepper to eat. Dozy, uh, I, I don't know, cricket, do you know what you call a, a nosy pepper? It's jalapeno business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give All me something. Right. I'm trying out here. Okay. I know, All you'd right. be a good clown. <laughs> When, so, when I went to clown school, you had to have a signature piece that everybody, each person developed a signature piece. Mm -hmm. So I created the most beautiful baby. Oh, wow. And I could walk along with the baby in a carriage where, with this big sign on it and so <laughs> forth and so on. And then after a while I'd say, you want to see the baby? I, I want to see the baby. Yeah. You do. All right. Here's the most beautiful baby. <laughs> now, am I right that that looks eerily similar to Cricket? I'm afraid so. <laughs> wow, the genes really passed down. <laughs> so you have to be creative baby. to be a clown, too. I, I'm sure you do, and, and we could talk more, but it's time for us to go. But before I let you uh, go, I want to first do announcements and then we'll, we'll say our thing. Then we'll laugh. We'll laugh. You can laugh through the announcements. I don't care. <laughs> uh, you can laugh at me trying to talk with this silly red nose on. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let me tell you what's coming up tonight on Channel 6 and this afternoon. We have feature program at 2 and 8 is the Virginia State Senator Baker. Actually, I like saying this. <laughs> <laughs> and the choristers, She's 5 and 9 p.m. And then weekend, we have Village in Motion Encores, which are Saturday and Sunday. They start at 9.30. They finish up about noon, not 12.30. Have to change that. Uh, Trepper feature tomorrow is the uh, Friday Morning Music Club. I don't know if they're going to make you laugh, but they'll make you sing, I hope. And that is at 5, excuse me, noon and 5 p.m. We have the Presidential Service Awards from this year, which will air at 2 p.m. And the Gay Men's Chorus. Ooh. Get it, Gay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 8 and 9 p.m. <laughs> on Saturday and Sunday. Our uh, video time machine is National Fitness Month, which fitness, laughing, yeah. right? We get right our there. everything fit. And um, Monday on Village in Motion is Richard, talk about Laffy, Turkey Dick, remember him? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Richard Nixon, part two with our presidential library because there was so much to talk about. That president, I think another one is going to have a lot to talk about too, but we won't get into that. No. So I think we have to leave people with Laffy. Okay, well, let me let me try one more time. I wasn't able to make you guys laugh right. this entire okay, time. Okay, you were okay. funny, you were funny. Give me a chance. Okay. okay, okay. I bet if we all start laughing, just fake laughing, I can get you guys to actually laugh. Okay. So let's just start. It's <laughs> 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 the See? best joke. I'm trying to be ridiculous. Okay. Finally. Listen, I did it. <laughs> we got to go. We're going to leave you with laughing, but I have to say first, thank you very much, Cricket the Clown, Kate Crumbery, Kelly Luchang, you're from Community Resources. And in all seriousness, moms, Sunday, take the moment. Let your children, your grandchildren, your great, you have great grandchildren, Kay? Yes. Okay, they need to indulge you. This is the one day of the year. So I don't know. say, I don't want anything. I ask Andrew what he's getting his mom and, oh, I don't want it. No, 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 no. Champagne, dark chocolate, 
<laughs> uh, roses, right? What else? Uh, money. <laughs> money. Money. A trip to the beach. Anything. And don't. I actually got flowers last night. Wow. Surprise already. So, happy Mom's Day. And let's leave them laughing. Make them laugh. <laughs> Make them laugh. <laughs> da, 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 da. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> do, 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 do. Bop, 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 b